Hi everybody, welcome to... This is the police. Come out with your hands up. Uh, this came out like, uh, last week? Week before- uh, Wait, I might be lying actually. Maybe it's been out for a little while now. I might be thinking about something else, I apologize. I'm sorry if that's not correct. Anyway, This is the police is meant to be very good. I've heard great things about it, and I'm very much looking forward to playing it. I've never played it before. So brace yourselves. Uh, if you've ever watched me play a game before for the first time, it's not always easy. Um, in fact, sometimes it can be quite frustrating. But we always get there in the end. Right, everybody? Right? No? Alright, anyway. <laughs> let's go. New game. This is the police. Nice. Alright, it is day one. Um, it is the 15th of July. It's Monday. Um, the Freeburg Tribune is saying City Hall confirms rumors of Jack Boyd's, Boyd's resignation. Okay. Let's make sure we don't miss anything here, shall we? I'm clicking like a madman. The Golden Bird reports Mayor Rogers. Sex maniac? I hope so. And the fact, Freeburg's number one paper is saying that, uh, Mark War 2 to be shown in Freeburg the day before the worldwide premiere by the mayor's personal request. Mark War 2. I don't know what any of this means. Anyway, I guess we're going to work. Off we go. Wait a second. Come on, start, damn it. Oh, yeah, okay, it's fine. <laughs> it's good. The car started. Do, can we get, like, a fancy Porsche or anything later on? Because that would be pretty cool. Oh, shit. When I was a kid, my father sometimes told me at bedtime that if I closed my eyes and didn't open them for a long time, all the demons would blow away. Yesterday I turned 60, but I still take his advice. Not because I'm sentimental or want to keep the memory of my father alive. I just can't think of a better solution. To get away from all the demons that haunt Freeburg, I'd need to wear a blindfold 24-7. Plus, it's a good idea to act blind when talking to reporters. At least that's what my colleagues say. They're afraid of press conferences. But for me, it's more like a confessional. No matter what lies you tell, you're privately thinking the honest answers. It helps me remember who I am. The fact that I'll be reading all about it in the papers tomorrow is a small price to pay. Call it penance for the preacher. Huh. Okay. So this is the, the the police chief. He's coming into work. He's 60 years old. This is the first time I'm afraid of those answers my mind has given me. Not because I'm mad I'm losing my job. Though it's true, I'm mad as hell. Not because I subconsciously blame everyone else. Though I damn sure do blame them. And don't even ask me what my next move is. I can't imagine, but even that doesn't scare me. The worst thing is, I know I'm going to have to do something, and I'll be damned if I know how far I'll go. I may have a lot of vices, but predictability isn't one of them. Whoa, is that even a vice? I learned a long time ago how to drive away the swarming demons. But what do you do when they're trying to rip your soul from your skin? Shutting my eyes tight as I can. The best solution remains the same. Play blind. I just hope the reporters think I was blinded by the camera flash. What the hell is going on here? Is he, is he getting fired or resigning or what? Come on. Good morning. Oh man, shit, am I gonna have to pick something for him? Good morning! Yesterday, the mayor's office officially announced your resignation. Did this come as a surprise, or did you know about it in advance? Okay, uh, the mayor discussed it with me. I've been expecting this bullshit from the mayor. What's the difference? Surprise. Um, do we want to keep, like, our cards close to our chest? Um, I mean, we don't want to, like, screw over the mayor either, or do we? Do we not like the mayor? There's a lot of things to consider here. I mean, there are a lot of people watching me right now writing things down, taking pictures and stuff. Okay, let's say the mayor discussed it with me. Mayor Rogers told me that he wants 
a fresh face running Freeburg PD. So no, it didn't come as a surprise. Oh, I hope that goes down well. Do you already know the name of your successor? I think it's a new man. I think it'll be a department veteran. Who cares? I'm going to say no. No, of course not. I don't think the mayor's office knows who's it is, who it is either. All right. So far, so good. I feel like we're handing this press conference pretty well. After the recent corruption scandal, your deputy Francis Kendrick said he was looking forward to resigning. If the mayor offered him your position, would that change his mind? Uh, who cares? I'd be happy. No way. Perhaps. Um, I mean, we're trying to stay guarded, right? So should we say forward to resigning? If the mayor offered him, would that change his mind? I'd be happy. Should we say I'd be happy? No way. I'd be happy. It's hard to say, but I can't think of a more deserving candidate than Captain Kendrick. Oh, there we go. I feel like we've like, we've done good here so far. Maybe. Although Kendrick was acquitted, many still believe that the police are cooperating with the Mafia. Do you have anything to say about this? Bullshit. <laughs> if it helps the police, no comment. I don't know. I don't know about that. I've never worked with the Mafia, but I can't speak for every man and woman in the department. I can't follow all my employees around the clock. Man, this guy is stone cold. Like, they're not getting an ounce of info from him. Do you think your personal relationship with the mayor could be the reason behind your retirement? How should I know? Um, what? Definitely not. I'm going to say definitely not. That's just not possible. Mayor Rogers is a true professional and he makes his decisions carefully. There's no place in our jobs for hard feelings. All right. I hope the mayor's watching this because, I mean, you know, maybe we'll get like some money or something. That'd be really good. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Bye. Shit. That was depressing. Um, How's the back today, Mr. Boyd? Same as usual. How did the press conference go? You can read about it in the newspapers tomorrow. Don't let anyone in. Even Mr. Kendrick? Especially Mr. Kendrick. Oh, shit. Something's gone on between him and Kendrick. Oh, shit. He's gonna sit down, and he's gonna take some backache pills. It's damn back. And uh, he's not even washing them down with water. Hell no, that's just vodka out of a pint glass. Now he's smoking a cigar in his office. As uh -oh. soon as I heard the door creak, I knew what face I'd see. When I tell Emma not to let anyone in, there's only one man it could be. It's Rude, Kendrick. arrogant, no warning. That's oh. Mayor Rogers in a nutshell. It's the mayor. White summer shoes, white socks, white shorts, white <laughs> no polo pants. shirt. Dick out. <laughs> and the white smile of a hungry shark. Holy shit, yeah. Mayor Rogers enters every room like he owns the place. Even the floorboards under his feet sound like they're creaking an apology. Nice. He never shied away from the odd corruption scheme. It's like the devil walks behind him. In the movies, the villains controlling the city play golf with the judges. Rogers plays tennis with them instead. That's about the only difference. Jack, I was hoping to catch you after the press conference. You, uh, you ran away so quick. Man, I feel really bad defending this asshole now. There's no like smoking a real at City Hall. No reason for me to hang around. Well, this morning I signed a ban on smoking in all public buildings. Soon you won't be able to smoke here either. <laughs> Soon Jesus enough Christ I won't Rogers. be here at all. If that's what I wanted to talk to you about. The people of this city like you, Jack. The police chief of all people. <laughs> don't, uh, don't betray that, Jack. Don't get wrapped up in any schemes. Uh -oh. Sit nice and quiet for the next 180 days, and uh, and you'll be remembered as a hero. That's the only thing that you still have left. Be the hero. Then Shit. how am I supposed to scrape together a retirement fund? You had a million chances to secure a luxury pension, one that even I would have envied, although I've never set aside any money for myself. I'm not planning to retire anytime soon. Uh oh. He just took his cigar too. Oh. 180 no. days of quiet, Jack. That's all I need. I don't have any problems with you, 
And you won't have any problems with me. Oh, shit. I have What's a new that? assistant, Troy Starr. If you have something to tell me, call him. But try not to bother him. He's a, he's a busy man. <laughs> I'll do my best. <laughs> Jack will do his best. Quit smoking up the office. <laughs> One of my friends will be using it soon. Oh, okay. All right, peace out, Rogers. All right, how do we fucking take this slime bag down? Whoa! Hang on a second. Oh, I'm sorry, babe. Only the mayor has this number. Mr. Mayor? Yeah, is this Troy Star? Yes. Go fuck yourself, Troy Star. <laughs> oh my god! Holy shit! Well, unfortunately, he's not going to be doh that because actually he was uh, mid. Mid job. Freebrig Tribune. Civil servants' wages won't be raised this year. It's got to be a um, good thing, right? The Golden Bird, head of culture department, owns Villa in Italy. That's not a good thing. And the fact, Freebrig's number one paper, people await a fresh look from next police chief. All right. Off to work we go. I don't think you can have any sugar or salt or like a knife or coffee or anything. We're just going. This car never starts, for Christ's sake. What? What's all that brown stuff all over the place, too? Like, he needs to wipe Cops it Cops don't use the police station cafeteria anymore. There's some kind of stigma against sitting shoulder to shoulder with your partners. Everybody just takes snacks from the machines or... Grabs a meal and hammers it down in the corner like a vulture on a corpse. Nice, that's how the I eat my thing, lunch, too. Don't look into anyone's eyes. Could be construed as an invitation to sit together. The only people eating here are ghosts. My deputy, Francis Kendrick. He recently became one of those ghosts. The subject of one of the most devastating corruption scandals in the history of Freeburg. Oh, shit. No evidence to support the accusations, but everyone knows Kendrick's days are numbered. I need that file I asked for. Needs to be ready tonight. Francis didn't say anything, but I understood. Ghosts aren't supposed to talk. Besides, I got a feeling he was already finished. Damn. It's like a broken shell of a man with a mustache. Would you like to receive tips about how the game works? Uh, I'm a six-year-old police chief a few months away from retirement. I don't need anyone telling me how to do my job. Uh, well, I mean, maybe we should have a couple of tips. Hopefully it's not like a full tutorial, though. Okay, let's see. Freeburg PD organizes upcoming work assignments into shifts for today and tomorrow. Every shift, officers respond to crimes in progress, and detectives continue their investigations. You can freely move employees between shifts. All right. All officers and detectives possess several important characteristics. Okay. So, for instance, Abrams here has 1,230 1, star points. Uh, he is a sergeant, and he likes to drink. A lot. Or is that empty? Well, if it's empty, maybe he has already drunk a lot. All right. Anyway, let's see. Professionalism shows the overall efficiency level of your policeman. Figure around 150 is considered average. Oh, okay. So he's got 1,230. So that's like way above average. Any policeman who falls short of this mark is not entirely reliable. While those whose professionalism is considerably higher than average are a safe bet, even in a pinch. Individual's level of professionalism may rise and fall over the course of their career. All right. Worth noting. Energy shows how tired you... Okay, so he's, like, not quite tired yet. Your employees lose one point of energy after each working day and restore one point after each day of rest. Okay. Your employees don't tell you everything. Some additional characteristics are hidden from view. For instance, some cops are lazy and will come up with any reason they can think of... Think of to take the day off. God, that would be me. While others like to drink too much. You can only guess, uh, that's me as well, about these things. But you should be able to draw your own conclusions based on the behavior of your employees. Okay, cool. I'm looking forward to this. All right, so we don't have, like, anyone. So that guy was just an example, right? Because he was like, holy shit, Price. What the fuck? Like, Price is not reliable at all. Look, she only has five star points, and she's like my grandma with a police hat on. 
Jesus. Okay, so we've got Mole, DeBrito, and Armstrong, who I guess are our detectives. And then we have, what, these patrol guys here. Kochi, Yancey, Purdy, Tsubaki, Asano, Austin, and Priced. This, th this is shift B, apparently. All right, uh, I guess we have to just start the day. I mean, we could maybe, like, move some people. Over. No, we can't even. Okay, fine. Let's just start the day and see what happens. We're managing a police department, apparently. Oh, this is fucking cool. We have SWAT guys, too. Oh, okay. We've got to take the cigar out of the map so that we can see. We've got some calls and messages. Responding to calls is the bread and butter of police work. You'll need to send your officers to the crime scene before the timer expires. A mark on the map shows where the call came from. The farther away the destination is from the police station, the longer it will take your officers to travel back and forth. So the longer your people will be tied up and unavailable for upcoming work. Oh! Everyday Mall! It's been a hit and run! Alright. The easiest way to determine how difficult the task might be is to check how many units you are allowed to send to the call. The more units you can send, the more serious the alleged threat. Particularly risky missions give you the option of sending SWAT, but they must be accompanied by at least one officer. Alright, the number of slots is not the only thing to consider. Any available information, from the location of the crime scene to the presence of weapons and so on, all of this can tell you how seriously each case should be taken. A mission might look simple at first glance, but it turns into a brutal meat grinder. Whoa! Or a serious call can come in, which turns out to be a false alarm. So this is a hit and run. A married couple exited a convenience store and saw a van in the parking lot back over a homeless man who'd been digging through a trash can. The driver jumped out to help, but once he saw that he'd hit a bum, he got back in the van and quickly drove away. All right, this is definitely a price job. <laughs> Off you go, Price. <laughs> Off she goes, look. Granny on patrol, she's coming. All right, we got the last picture show theater here has come up as well. There's a fight. A theater manager reports that during a showing of Citizen Kane, a drunk man attempted to force his way into the theater carrying a snowboard decorated with the word Rosebud. When he was denied entry, he violently attacked the cashier and is currently fighting with the theater's security guard. Holy crap. All right, Yancey. You're gonna need some backup. Take Austin with you, Yancey, and go and sort this one out. Off they go. Man, I am loving the music in this game. So we have some money up here, too. We have 2,400 bucks. I don't know what we have to do with that. But look at these guys are actually going to respond to these calls. This is incredible. Oh, it's raining. Oh, we got a report from the hit and run. When everything goes well, the police capture the criminals and nobody dies. But the truth is, sometimes the criminals manage to escape. Just try to avoid any dead cops or civilians. Dead cops will hurt your roster. Dead citizens bother the mayor even more than living ones. Okay. <laughs> Alright, good job, Price. <laughs> Fucking Price! You weren't able- <laughs> Jesus! Alright, fine, Price. Bring it back in. Get back to the station and you can go eat lunch with Kendrick. You both look like roughly the same. Oh, we got the fight report in. Whoa, we caught the offender! Officers unharmed! Oh shit, there's a civilian killed though? But we sent like two of our best guys. Maybe we should have sent Purdy and Yancey instead. Alright, anyway. That was a pretty good outcome, I think. Um, maybe we should have sent the SWAT team to that one. Could, was that a SWAT call? Armed robbery in the suburbs. Three teenagers armed with a shotgun robbed a videotape store and made off with their whole collection of adult movies. The criminals fled in a car, but the store manager wrote down the car's license plate. The owner is one Janet Brown, who lives in the suburbs. All right, Kochi. You're going to have to go with Birdie as well, okay? Because these guys have guns and pornos. All right, off you guys go. Shit, there's been another fight as well. Johnson, Jurgen, and Katz Law Firm. A brother and sister clashed with each, with each other over their deceased father's will. According to one of their lawyers, we don't dare separate them, and our security guard is off duty tonight. All right, Tsubaki. You could go do that one alone. That one doesn't sound too bad. All right. And then we got Price and Asano, just in case we need them. It's at uh, 3 in the afternoon. Price is, like, getting ready to, like, go into a coma at this point of the day. So we have to maybe conserve some more of her energy. And give her a banana or something. Jeez. Oh, there's been an assault in the ghetto. A passerby saw some teenagers attack an elderly musician, then run away with his guitar and his money. 
All right, Yancey. You and Price, go check it out. <laughs> yeah, Yancey's taking his grandma out for a car ride in the police car. When your cops aren't sure how to proceed, they might contact you and ask you how to handle the situation. Try to deal with whatever comes up, but don't waste all your time on this stuff. You have plenty of other problems on your plate. Yeah, right. Holy shit, this is stressful as hell. Who ever thought that running a police station would be so stressful? It's crazy. All right, the vehicle in question is parked right outside the Brown residence. The sounds of moaning and loud laughter can be heard through the living room window. They're watching the pornos. Knock on, th knock on the door, open up, police. Turn on the siren and loudspeaker and shout that the house is surrounded. Sneak into the house through an open window. All right, we're going to turn on the siren and loudspeaker and shout that the house is surrounded, okay? Good job. All right. We got them. Oh, perfect. No deaths either. Kochi and Purdy, the best. Look, the dream team. They've done it. Holy shit. And now we can return all of those pornos back to its right, their rightful owner. Perfect. Oh, we've had a report on the fight. Subaki. What the fuck? Tsubaki let one, the brother or the sister escape. That was the brother and sister fight at the law firm. You would think that, like, she would manage to just sort of mediate the situation, but obviously not. Damn it. All right. And then we still got Price and Yancey <laughs> going to the ghetto. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I'm not sure how that's going to turn out. We'll have to see. Holy shit. This is pretty cool. Like I, I, like I said, I'd heard a lot of stuff about it, but oh, we've had an assault here. Yancey and Price. God damn it, Yancey and Price. Boy, Price cannot be any more unreliable. <laughs> Holy shit. Price, we're going to put you on meter maid duty at this rate, okay? You have to be able to catch the bad guys at least, for Christ's sake. Man, oh man. Jeez. Oh, day two is like almost over, I think. It's night time. Oh, it is end of the day. We can just end the day now. That's fucking cool. Holy shit. If you think you'll need a couple extra hands tomorrow, you can order any cop to come in and work overtime. But if they're working flat out, they'll be much more exhausted. Somebody's bound to make a mistake. Oh, that is so cool. Holy shit. Okay, so that was shift B. Shift A, we've got Stovall, Van Dahl, Robbins, Samadi, Grant, Birch, and Birch Jr., Holy shit, look at dad and son look so much alike. And then we've got we've got we got the shift A price who is Roy. <laughs> I don't understand why. Why this person is employed. And I don't also this person. Maybe we can like boost them up and make them better. We also also got Beasley and Moser here as well to do some investigations. They're like our detectives, I guess. Okay. That's pretty cool. Let's end the day. Used to be when I asked Kendrick to stay late at the office, he liked to grumble and crack wise. Nowadays, he doesn't have the strength for it. Slumped shoulders, blank stare, wrinkled skin. The past few weeks, I don't hardly recognize my old friend. In his younger years, he reminded me of a gallant royal officer in an old Kipling story. Kendrick isn't just crumbling under the weight of the public pressure, but from the shame of it all. Internal Affairs raided the library he inherited from his grandfather, hoping they'd find buckets of cash stashed in the pages. Heard about the look on his face, the fearless policeman standing helpless in horror? I've known Francis for 30 years. The past 20 years he's played loose with the law. And I know that at a certain point every stolen dollar brings more misery than anything else. Probably sounds crazy, but I sympathize with the guy. Poor guy. What can I do? Your friends are your friends, and these are the waters we swim in. Oh shit, the TPS report's ready. Called all of the people on that list today. Now they know you're in business. So you could get a call from any of them. You don't need to worry about any of them. I've cleared them all. And what kind of business are we talking here? It's nothing too serious, just like you asked. Should be just a few small favors. Payments will vary depending on the situation and who you're dealing with. Damn. How much are you looking to earn? Half a million. Whoa. Half a million? Why not a whole million? Because everybody wants to take a million. Figured I'd try something different. Half a million in 180 days? 
Well, you could earn it all above board if you netted all the big fish and hit all your bonuses. Whoa. Never knew you for a fisherman. Well, you never got into my business, and I'm not trying to get into yours. But be careful about bringing in any other cops. Sooner or later, they'll put the finger on you. And, and one more thing, Jack. I remember what you said, but I should probably add one more name to that list. Christopher Sand. Sand? Uh -oh. Who's that? It's bad, isn't it? Christopher G. Sand. Everyone knows the name, but few could tell you who he is. The old man stays away from the spotlight. Always wears old-fashioned jeans and knitted sweaters. Gives to charity. Rarely attends social events. An avid hunter, I hear. Even dabbles in poetry. You'd never guess he's the head of the oldest and most powerful gang in the city. Goes back as far as his great-grandfather. And Sand is strict about following the old rules. He rarely involves himself in commonplace murders and robberies. Hardly needs oh. to intimidate anyone to get his point across. He's like the bathrobe and slippers guy. The people guy. who work for him each have their sphere. They provide protection where needed, even work with the authorities when they want to make a deal. Meanwhile, San pulls the strings without getting his hands dirty. Oh, shit. People sometimes mistake his quiet approach. A couple years ago, an arms dealer decided to expand its business without asking permission, and his whole family paid the price. Oh, shit. What In a four waste weeks, of a nice San killed sweater. 31 people old men, women, even a few teenagers. And San's people made sure every paper reported it. Frank, I don't want to hear you say that name again. Jack, please, listen to me. I'm in with these guys. We agreed, Frank. That's not the kind of business I'm into. I Damn. don't go there. Never have, never will. Except for my half a million retirement fund. Holy shit. Wow. All right. Well, listen. <clears throat> this is the police. Man, it's pretty cool so far. I know like I'm just at the start, but I'm liking what I see so far. And we're going to play it some more and see if we can get more into it. We found um we've discovered a couple of the characters. I don't know if the story changes. Like I'm I'm guessing that at this point this is like laying the sort of like foundation of the next 180 days, right? So it's like um you know that boy do want is keep being forced to retire, is going to retire. He's trying to save up a you know, a, a small nest egg that he can retire on uh, with the 180 days he has left. Kendrick is crooked and is going to help you sort of make that money or you can make it above board, I guess. Um, and then the mayor is some slimy asshole who hates you. And we've just discovered who this Christopher Sand is. Um, so I guess that's like all stuff that's probably happens no matter what. And then... Maybe you can make choices later in the game and stuff changes. I don't know. But it's kind of cool actually sending cops out to, like, do things. It'll be neat if there's, like, a murder and we have to investigate it and do stuff around that and whatever. Um, so, so far, so good. We will be back next time for more, where we will continue day three of This is the Police and see if we can get any further um, and make this guy Boyd some money. That'd be pretty good. Great. As usual, thanks for watching and... I'll see you next time!